Welcome to The Hollywood Scholar. I'm Jed Morgan. The big story controlling the narrative at this point is Lord of the Rings and the Prime Video TV show that's coming later this year. And all the news surrounding it is just making it seem worse and worse. More and more like the studio has no confidence in its production or its development. And the further we get into this show, the closer we get to its release date, apparently in September, the less fans are getting excited about it, the more problems that are arising. And that trailer that they released last week really didn't entice many fans. I was doing a lot of online research and it wasn't really speaking to fans as, for, uh, for example, the Fellowship of the Ring teaser that came out a year and a half before the film did to audiences, really bringing them together, being like, holy shit, this is going to be the greatest thing of all time. That teaser they dropped nine months before the show comes out. She's like, oh, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. That's a mouthful. That's like the biggest takeaway from it. And then there's the one still that they released that really didn't show anything. And then there's rumors of how they're progressing with their direction in the plot and what their priorities are when it comes to representation and diversity, which usually leads studios and films down a path that fans don't really relate to. If they're focusing on identity politics, you're not going to be focusing on the story. And it's a story that people interact with and relate to and fall in love with. So if you make a story that has story second diversity first it's going to be a hollow entertainment experience that leads towards lower and lower view counts as the uh, franchise progress but prime videos the lord of the rings the rings of power rumored to feature LG, uh, lgbtq plus representation god i feel like the prime minister of canada saying that it's just a mouthful that whole thing is a mouthful <laughs> A brand new rumor claims the Prime Video's up-and-coming Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power series will feature gay, I'm just going to say gay representation. That's my umbrella term. And yeah, I'm not really liking that logo, but you know, you can't judge a series based on stills like this and trailers like this. Like, I'm still holding out hope make that very much clear but it's not speaking to me in a way that really entices me to the project. If it didn't say Lord of the Rings of the top, I would not care about this show whatsoever it's just some random newly made thing yeah whatever <laughs> but this rumor uh, comes from youtuber gary beekler oh i didn't know they were <laughs> taking this article directly from gary's video which i did watch and you should definitely check out gary breaks it down into quite a lot of detail and you know when it comes to certain franchises certain things should not be included to them like sex and lord of the rings should not be included in the story whatsoever and there's just a lot of things that are story specific and you, you shouldn't wander too far from an existing property. If you made Doctor Who into a hard R, you know, horror series, fans would reject that. That's not what they want. And Lord of the Rings is a mythology made for England. So it should be predominantly white and was made by a Catholic man who was, had that mythology as his end goal. So there shouldn't be any of this other representation things that should be a priority. Like if it occasionally happens, you know, if it's done for the right reasons, but you can't trust any sort of race swapping or changing a character's orientation to be done for the right reasons these days. There's just too much evidence to the contrary to implicitly trust their motives in making these sorts of decisions. And Gary makes a very good point in that video where he says, if they were making a show based on African mythology and they tried to whitewash a bunch of it, I'd have a, just much of a problem with that because it's not being accurate to the mythology that it's derived from or what the story it's trying to tell. So it's just really weird that they have to infect all these predominantly white or pri uh, pri primarily Christian stories with their terms of diversity and inclusion while not really focusing on the broader implications or the broader message that the story is derived from it's a lot of disingenuous to spend so much money and then be like you know what fuck that guy he made all the stuff we're gonna completely ignore everything you wanted to make out of the story this later rumor from Beekler comes after so-called Lord of the Rings fan site OneRing.net who obtained the first official description of the Lord of the Rings series channeled their inner Hagrima uh, worm tongue and began pushing blatant gay propaganda onto not only J.J.R. Token, but the Lord of the Rings as well. Yeah, they uh, the OneRing.net had all these like panels about how woke Lord of the Rings secretly was. And I watched some clips from that, and it was just cringe as all hell. You're like, yep, Sam and Frodo, totally gay. And he wanted them to be gay, even though he didn't really 
ha- have exposure to those types of people in uh, J.R.R. Tolkien in the time that he wrote the series. And like Gondor in transition, how Gondor was apparently a metaphor for transgenders the whole time. It's like, no, J.R.R. Uh, uh, Tolkien had no idea what a transgender was beyond uh, <laughs> their uh, negative com- uh, connotations of the day. So he would not have created Gondor as a metaphor for that. Uh, back in June 2021, the website took to Twitter to claim that Tolkien would celebrate gay rights because he was a devout follower of the Roman Catholic Church. What? He's Catholic, so he likes gay people? Like, that's fine. Like, most Catholic people these days are do support gay people, but they're not mutually inclusive. Or, But that's just a really weird take. Uh, a tweet said, wait until you find out that J.R. Tolkien is a devout Roman Catholic Christian boy. You guys in for a major shock. The user added, in fact, Lord of the Rings was heavily inspired by Christianity. I'm pretty sure Christianity doesn't look too kindly on the alphabet people. Yeah, and that's more a take, especially of that era of the 40s when he was writing the books. It definitely didn't take kindly. And you can't judge a man for the time he came from. I... Do not support judging a person on modern day standards because if you carry that argument out into the future, we as a society today may be judged by future day standards and be condemned by our actions that we don't know and generally think it a thought of as horrible people just on stuff that we didn't know better. So it's not an indication of how good of people we are today. It's, it's just a really – it's a cycle that would continue down a rabbit hole that would not end and would just – result in everyone being terrible people who don't deserve basic human rights. That is the end of the trail that judging people from the past by current day standards. Like an example I gave is what if in a thousand years we find out that carrots are sentient beings that they think as well as human beings and they're just as smart as us, but we've been eating them for thousands of years. That makes us horrible people. Yes, it's It's not a great comparison, but it does show that if we're judged by future standards, by our today knowledge, no one's going to win. That is a no-win scenario, so I don't think it should be done today for the past either because it's not fair to them or to us. The OneRing.net responded, Tolkien followed the church and the church celebrates gay rights, so I think the surprise is on you. The church may celebrate gay rights today, but they... Didn't in the 40s. So OneRing.net is just a retard. <laughs> Father Christopher Miller. Oh, I, I love Father Christopher Miller. I haven't seen him on the chats recently in uh, Nerd Roddick's chats. Responded to the claim by OneRing.net. He wrote on Twitter, What the heck? As a priest of the Catholic Church, of which Token was a devout member, uh, that I can tell you we do not celebrate gay, uh, gay rights. You do realize the Catholic Church symbolism through Lord of the Rings, right? Uh, Lamnus bread is a, a parallel to the Eucharist. I, I don't know what that word is, but the real bread of life. And yeah, there's a ton of Catholic representation and Catholicism ideas that are presented in the Lord of the Rings that should be withheld in the TV show. If that was the original intention of the writer keeping those catholic messaging if you were adapting a you know an, again an african mythology story that was focused on certain other principles and rights yes do it from that perspective as well absolutely but being keeping towards the spirit of the story is very important and going against it in this way blatantly misrepresenting thoughts of the time is not going to bring people to your side or uh, your opinion. The Catholic Church teaching on LGBTQ and homosexuality is clear. Uh, section whatever begins the section title Chastity and Homosexuality. It reads homosexuality refers to the relationship between men or between women who experience an exclusive or predominant sexual attraction towards person of the same sex. It was taken at a great variety of forms throughout the centuries and different cultures. It continues its psychological genesis remains largely unexplained basing itself on the sacred scripture. Okay, that's just going to go into a lot about how they don't necessarily support it, which I don't have a problem with churches having opinions on certain social issues. That's totally fine. And my church doesn't have opinions on gay rights like that. They are for gay rights, and certain things, certain churches will disagree, and that's totally fine. You can 
respect someone's life choices, but not agree with them. Not everyone has to be like, I, I think you're doing the right thing by becoming trans. You can be like, I support your decision to become trans. You may still think it's wrong, and that doesn't make either people in the situation bad people. And, wow, they really go into depth on Catholicism's views on homosexuality. <laughs> All right, let's move on. In September 2021, the OneRing.net pushed an easily disprovable theory uh, concerning gay elves. All right, uh, yeah, this is just going into way more detail of the OneRing.net situation, which I don't necessarily want to get into. But I do want to focus on the Prime Video show focusing on those gay rights situations. It wasn't implicit in the story. It was not intended. The author barely even knew what gay people were at the time. So he would definitely have not included or wanted something like that included in his story. So I think the spirit of the author is a very important thing when it comes to such culture-defining stories as this. It was made to be a mythology for England. And mythology is hugely defining in a culture's development and structure. So we shouldn't erase the meaning of his mythology for modern day reasons. And that's just really disingenuous. And I can't believe they spent so much goddamn money to completely erase everything that Tolkien intended in his story. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Anon. If you like what I do here and want to see good, compelling stories that Hollywood will no longer give you, check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern-day mental illness issues. Books 1, Down in Flames, and Book 2, Apocalypse Then, currently on sale. Book 3, Kill the Dark, coming soon.